Hello, welcome all. Today we have a laser course session with Catherine of uh, South New Mexico. And my name is Jim Elizondo. I am from Real World Ranching, where our goal is to maximize your profitability while you improve your land the fastest. So uh, please, Catherine, tell us a little about your operation and yourself. Yes, sir. First, thank you very much for answering my question and taking it. I appreciate your knowledge very much. Um, as, as you said, I'm in Southern New Mexico and the operation is nearly 60,000 acres. And the uh, terrain out there is uh, primarily, it's maybe 10 to 12 inches of rain per year, very spotty. And uh, we've been suffering from a drought for many, many years. That coupled with uh, the past practices of conventional grazing has left us with really poor forage. And uh, we typically have very hot summers over 100 degrees, and yet our winters can drop down into single digits. Yeah. And so the, the operation currently has a mixed herd, and then another uh, part of the herd is uh, Black Angus. Okay. And uh, do you have a breeding season? Currently, the um, uh, current operators on that, they actually let the bulls in year round. So it's not maximizing uh, trying to use what forage we do have in the, uh, say, around July or so. So that's one thing that I've learned from your um, sessions that is something we should change. And have you developed your water points, your fences, or, or not? How many paddocks you have? The, the paddocks are very large in size. And the cattle, uh, the way the current operation is going is they let them uh, freely graze over large areas. You can imagine at 60,000 acres, uh, it can be several sections. Uh, I work on water, so that's one aspect. I would like to increase our drinkers out there so that we can um, manage the herds better. Okay, and what altitude do you have? It's approximately three and a half thousand, so 3,500 feet. Mm -hmm. Okay, any mountains in the property? No, sir, no mountains in the property. It's all flat. Uh, relatively flat lands. Okay, then uh, I'm I'm going to to start answering. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Okay, in this uh, property in southern New Mexico, they get ten to twelve inches of rainfall per year, and it mostly comes in the months monsoons, monsoons on the late part of the summer, early fall. So because they get uh, winter frost early in the year, some of that growth may be too late in the year and in drought years. That means that the new seedlings that are trying to establish will be hit by frost. And when the cattle come to graze, they will pull them out along with the roots. I have consulted for a large ranch south of there on the Mexican side with a little more rainfall, uh, 15 to 16 inches annual, but sometimes also drought. And that's the problem there, the same problem. So by doing total grazing program with adapted genetics and selection guidelines, they have been able to improve their production, not only of pounds of calves per acre, but their stocking rate, the desirable species of forage have returned, much more wildlife is drawn like a magnet to that property. So now they have a lot of mule deer, they even have jaguar, sometimes wolves come. They have a bear, black bear, and cinnamon black bear and turkeys and two subspecies of white-tailed deer, deer. So now it's a haven for wildlife because we do uh, by 
During total grazing, we get more cow days harvested per acre, which has a great impact on the rest of the property. So that's what I would suggest to you, to try to give longer rest periods to most of the property and have stockpile areas in large areas so you can use them in case of a drought, winter, and to be able to have a, an area for wildlife where no one will go there. The first year we gave a one and a year, one and a half years rest to those areas. But after that first time, we went to a one year rest to the stockpile areas. So I would suggest you start by doing that. And uh, I know that the land has suffered from conventional ranching and many years of drought. Under conventional ranching, what happens is that the cows go and select the best plants, the best species, and the best parts of those species, leaving the rest as um, reject, rejected. That means that on the same paddock, you're going to have overgrazed plants and overrested plants. Both is bad for the land and for the number of growing points per square yard. And you start to desertify. When the cattle return, what will they regraze? Well, of course, the plants that were grazed before and are struggling to grow a tender shoot. And that will be what they prefer. And they will hammer it again making the roots grow shorter. And when there is a drought or a hard freeze, they die. Then that portion becomes with skeletons of desirable plants. You can observe them if you look closely and the, the soil surface will start to cross. And that crust inhibits the absorption of rainfall and the germination of your better species seeds, which are rounded. So the less desirable species will have ons and can germinate in that hard ground will take over. And not only that, the cows will not graze those and keep grazing the best species, continuing the desertifying cycle. To change that, we need to do all of the program. And it's very profitable to do it as in that ranch that I was referring to, they had already increased their stocking rate to double by doing rotational selective grazing, but by doing total grazing and applying all of these principles along with the adaptive genetics selection guidelines, now they have increased their stocking rate three times higher than under selective rotational grazing, which was already double of conventional grazing. That means now they have five to six times more higher stocking rate than normal under conventional grazing. So how do you ask, how do we start implementing better forage management? First of all, by trying to avoid overgrazing. Overgrazing happens when a plant is regrazed before it has fully recovered. So that's number one. That's what shortens roots. That's what creates a desert, overgrazing, which is not taking it down and then allowing a long rest period. No, overgrazing is regrazing before the plant, the individual plant has fully recovered. To get more cow days per acre per grazing and provide a much longer rest period to the rest of the property, we need to do total grazing, which means a high harvest efficiency of 80 to 90% of what is there per grazing. And this allows a much longer rest period for the rest of the property. Then we stockpile areas. Now we can do it. If we are doing conventional grazing, we, ne we can never stockpile. Because remember, stocking rate determines profits. The higher the number of productive animals you can maintain at a low cost per ranch per year will determine the profits. So we want to have more production. We, have, we want to have more cattle. But how do we start? Where do I start? That's your question. Well, 
by concentrating all the cattle in one paddock. So you can allow the rest of the ranch, the other paddocks, to start regenerating and allow them at least one year of rest. If you do not have subdivisions, I will start by doing some subdivisions, or I will start by doing a, a small portion of the ranch correctly from the start. It depends on how you want to approach it. The ideal at first, if, if you don't want to invest a lot of money, you can do, uh, that's why I needed to know how many patterns you have. But uh, what you need to do is to get a longer rest period and not have the cows buy the same plant and rebite it again until they kill it. That depletes the root reserves and there are no new leaves producing more energy through photosynthesis for the root reserves and they die. So that's the main problem. So if you like what I said and you're interested in total grazing, I will suggest you take the course, it explains there how to do it, and you join the wait list. Now, uh, there is more to this. There is more and you will learn there that there is more and we have Q&A sessions and all that because you're going to need them. And uh, that's what I can say now. So uh, folks, if you like what I said, uh, try to join. But in reality, what is happening there is the land is desertifying and not only in that property, all over many properties, the land is vastly desertifying from overgrazing and over resting. We need the hooks of our animals concentrated to break the, that hard cross and then provide a long enough rest period. And we can do that and we can increase our stocking rate the very first year. So it's very interesting, especially in those areas. The, the potential is enormous because they have been degraded so badly and they can be uh, regenerated and they can be bring the they can be brought to their former glory. Okay, well, thank you very much. And I hope to see you soon. Hello, Catherine, you can unmute yourself now. I stopped recording. Thank you so much. I, I so appreciate that. I was trying to write as fast as I could. Oh, no, 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 no. This will be recorded and posted. Uh, yes, so I'm, I'm grateful for that. And then also, I didn't know you had a total grazing program coming up, so I'll definitely get on the wait list for that. So thank you so much. Yeah, I will advise you to do that. And uh, I also do consulting. Uh, for large properties, if in the future you feel that it may profit you, you can contact us. Well, I'd, I'd like that. I, I appreciate that, Mr. Elizondo, because uh, this operation, as you can tell, it's oil and gas based. So yeah. they do have the resources, unlike some folks, to get consulting in there. And it's actually joint with another ranch. Um, I don't know if you know any of the ranch names out there. Uh, this the ranch that I'm I'm working for is Limestone Ranch, and the one next to it is the Triple uh, C, and that's the Crawford's Ranch. So between the two, you're probably up around a hundred thousand acres. That's and nice. yeah, and I I just look at it and I think, my gosh, we're ruining the landscape too. Um, I mean, yes, I am in you know involved in the petroleum, but um, but when I see we've got sand dunes that are being created and stuff like that. It's just really going downhill, so. That's how deserts are created. I've been to Morocco and that's what they did there. Yeah, in Africa, Northern Africa. Well, I think we got a pretty good start going and I'd like to reverse it. So oh, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I would like to talk to, um, you know, the ranch is 
obviously it's run by a board. It's not your conventional ranch because the oil and gas. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I keep throwing things out there. I'm uh, so um, yes, definitely would be interested in your consulting. I've got to, uh, you know, have them view it a little differently and and see the potential rather than seeing it a negative cash flow. Yeah, it can be done. I yeah, really and and then you know, for my dream, it's just very reassuring to hear this because you know I hope to get me a small parcel of land and and uh, restore that uh, grasslands and you know maybe uh, I don't know which you know, ruminant I'd go with, but, you know, uh, we'll just see what God has in store for me. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. And it's thank you so time. much. It's, it's just such an honor to talk to you. Thank you again. Thank you. And have a great day. You too. Bye-bye now. Bye.